Fabric is live outside the courtroom in Boston. Uh, Deb, uh, the things that we can't see because there are no cameras in that courtroom, uh, tell us about Jahar Tsarnaev's uh, body language. How does he look now? You know, his body language was really quite fascinating. Uh, he's much taller than he appears. He's over six feet tall. Uh, he was wearing an orange prison jumpsuit. His hair was long. It appears that he suffered some sort of nerve damage to part of his face. His hand was in a cast. Um, his feet were shackled. His hands were not until the end of the proceedings. But as he walked in, one of the women who was sitting in his section uh, wearing a white headscarf actually sobbed. She gasped audibly. And that's when he looked straight in her direction and smiled, but he seemed disinterested, almost as if he didn't care. He was fidgeting. The judge was talking to him. He kept looking back uh, at the women who had come there for him, uh, sort of looking at them, a baby that one of them was holding was cooing. Uh, and then when he stood to answer the charges against him, 30 charges, including conspiracy to use a weapon of mass destruction, he pled not guilty to each of the charges. But what's so interesting about this, Jake, is that he actually had a very distinctive Russian accent. And when I spoke to his wrestling coach, who happened to be here with a number of the people he wrestled with, they said they were flabbergasted because he never had such a distinctive accent uh, when they knew him, when he was going to high school here with them. And the coach said, you know, he came to see whether, in fact, there was any of the old Jahar Tsarnaev, uh, the, the Tsarnaev that they knew. Um, and he said he just couldn't see it. He was fidgeting. He looked disinterested. He was slumping. There was no sense of really the seriousness of what was going on inside that courtroom, Jake. And Deb, we can't confirm it, but there was someone there who looked like Catherine Russell, uh, Jahar Tsarnaev's sister-in-law, the widow of his older brother, Tamerlan. Uh, did you see her? We saw two women, two younger women who looked, we know that he's got two younger sisters here in the United States. Uh, there, there seems to be some sort of a family resemblance between the two women we saw. We did not see Catherine Russell. Um, you know, whether her lawyers would have told her to stay away from the courthouse, um, you know, they're still, she's still in play. And so what I mean by that is that they're just trying to keep her uh, quiet, keep her away from things, let the attention drift over to Jahar Tsarnaev, uh, because, uh, you know, until prosecutors say you're, you're off the hook, you're really not. So uh, whether she was in the court, we did not see her. But the victims who were there, 30 of them, 30 victims and their families, one woman had crutches. They were sitting there, they were shifting, and one of them you know, kept sort of wiping, uh, wiping what looked like tears from her eyes. So uh, very dramatic. And what's so interesting, Jake, is that you know, th this was a packed courtroom. There had to be at least 100 people in that court. And in the moments before he walked in, it was so quiet. Nobody was speaking, nobody shifted, nobody coughed. The only thing you heard was the newborn that was held by one of the Tsarnaev women who were in the row reserved for his family.